Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 132 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Yep, my voice is not 100% yet but we are getting better, no question. All right, let's go to the very first one, which was uh, a series of questions from a high school out in Pennsylvania. And I'm not going to answer. I'm just going to rattle off the questions they threw at me so you know the type of stuff I'm going to get. Uh, hi, Mark. My students I, and I are excited about our Google Hangout scheduled for the 19th from 740 Eastern time. By the way, that's 440 my time. Uh, we just finished watching Beyond the Curve together. My students have some interesting questions we were hoping we could address during our time together. They plan to ask you some of the following. Uh, one, tell us a little bit about yourself, background, education, history, how you got into flat earth theory. Is flat earth your full-time profession? Two, could you explain your flat earth structure, diameter of the flat earth, how thick is the flat earth, what is on the other side? Three, how high is the dome? How did the dome get there? How did the sun, moon, and stars work within the dome? What are the relative sizes of the sun uh, in the flat earth model? Four, what is your explanation of other planets being round? How are they related or interact with a flat earth? Five, how does gravity work within your flat earth model? Six, if the earth is flat, how do you explain the tides? Seven, how do you explain the seasons? Eight, do you believe in the Big Bang Theory? Nine, can you explain eclipses in the flat earth theory? 10, why a geocentric model? I thought that was interesting. I don't usually get that one. 11, could you explain more about the gyroscope results? 12, if the globe earth theory is really a lie, who benefits from the lie and why? Uh, 13, why has nobody reached the edge of the ice wall? Explorers have crossed Antarctica. 14, could you explain your st stance on global warming climate change? It's amazing to me how many times I actually get that question. And 15, what progress has been made on the laser test? Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing your perspectives. Sincerely, Diana Cole. Yep. And they asked all those questions. And unfortunately, uh, they did not record them. And since it was Google Hangout, if it's on Skype, I'll record it. If it's on Google Hangout, I, I don't have a tool to do that. So uh, we won't have the audio from it, uh, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth. Mr. Mark Sargent, I want to tell you thank you very, very much. You made me open my eyes before I was a flat earther. I was an atheist too, but after I heard you in the Flat Earth Clues, I was convinced that we have a creator. I believe in God. Now my life is different. I see everything is credible. How much BS is out there and we all eat it like it not tomorrow. I don't know what that means. Uh, Mark, I should listen to you and don't talk about Flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, Fight Club. And do like that Fight Club because now my friends think I'm crazy, but I don't care, Mark, because now I'm a believer. And once you go flat, you never go back. Uh, bless you and keep up the good work, Mark. And that's from Bori Shy Town. Cool. Awesome. Again, first rule of Flat Club. This one's called Keep Up the Great Work. Mark just wanted to tell you that you are loved and appreciated from the bottom of this flat earther's heart and no doubt millions of others. Your flat earth's greatest ambassador, Mark. Thank you for hanging in there and never giving up. That's from Brenda Johnson. Thank you, Brenda. It is much appreciated. This one's called Plausible. Mark, okay, well, you got me. I dismiss this theory as insane and no way plausible. Now, after watching the Netflix special and then spending a few days on YouTube and doing my own research, I'm baffled at how possible it all can be. It's hard to deny evidence, so you may have gained another believer. I'd like to do my part, so let me know. That's from Adam. Yeah, this Netflix thing is really, it's really amazing. Uh, this one's called Sandy Hook False Flag Videos Missing from YouTube. Mark, it appears that most uh, that most all videos investigating the Sandy Hook fa false flag have been taken down from YouTube. We need to find an alternative to YouTube, Google, and Facebook. If anyone knows of a vile option, please send it my way. Thanks and share. That's from Todd. Uh, yeah, it's, again, it's tough to bring up false flag shootings uh, or whatever it is. And again, I'm saying that every single thing out is out there is a false flag. No. But uh, as the old saying goes, you know, one rotten apple can spoil the whole bunch, which is people get suspicious. Uh, look, if one thing is fake, then you have to question everything, which is unfortunate. Uh, so, and with Sandy Hook, come on, the the easiest thing for me, if you wanna you wanna go at people, uh, there's three things I could throw at you right right off the top of my head. The the first one would be obviously 
um, you know, I will pay a thousand dollars cash money to anybody that shows me a 10 second video clip of a child being carried out of that school by law enforcement. And you're saying, oh, what are you talking about? You can look at the, there's like three still shots. That's it. There is no video. And you're saying, well, the video didn't get there in time. It's like, no, 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 no. The traffic copters got there immediately. Remember, they don't have to go across highways. You know, they just get there. And they had a full tank of gas and they hovered and hovered. It, for, to, to evacuate 600 kids out of a school during a crisis hostage shooting situation like that would have taken a long, long time. And by the, the traffic copters got there instantly. And it was like it was over. That was it. Nobody, nobody, it, like it had been over for hours, which is really strange considering it was literally first thing in the morning when, when the, the, the copters got there. That's the first thing. Um, second one, look it up. If you get a chance, all you have to do is go into YouTube. This one isn't censored. I'm pretty sure it's still out there. Uh, and if anyone wants a copy of the video, if you can find it, I've got it on my machine, which is called Robbie Parker Smiling. Robbie Parker was a parent of apparently a six-year-old girl who was gunned down. And yet, 24 hours later on CNN, before the cameras went live, he was just smiling and joking around with friends. Big old smile on his face. Couldn't have been happier. And then when he got in front of you know, once he thought the cameras were going live, that's when he, he tried to get into character and got all sad. And, and, like, and CNN never ran that clip again. They... He screwed up because he thought that they were going to let him know when they were going to go live. And it turned out it was live the entire time. Um, and last but not least, I don't want to drag this out because it's, this is a flatter thing. It's not a Sandy Hook thing. Uh, last but not least would be the, um, the perfect kill ratio, which has never happened before or since in the history of mass shootings or war for that matter. Which is, we all know, look, there's dead and there's wounded. And if you have 10 dead, you have 30 wounded. And it's, it's relationship. You know, the, the, there's always more wounded than there are dead. Plain and simple. That's a, I don't care what, if, if firearms are involved, that's what it's always going to be. Because you're going to miss targets. And there's going to be ricochets. And things are going to be bouncing off. And people are going to get hit with in the shoulder and the foot and the ear and stuff like that. They're going to be wounded, right? And they're going to go to the hospital. And this was not that. This was the exact opposite. There were no wounded. Every single person that was touched by a bullet, teacher or child, died. Uh, you got shot in the foot, dead. Shot in the ear, dead. Uh, grazed you in any way, shape, or form, you were dead. And apparently, what I understood, one child went to the hospital and died. So there were no wounded. And you're saying, well, why is that? Well, how does that mean anything? Well, because the last thing you want... Children are terrible. If they're not professional child actors... They are terrible at trying to lie uh, under stress, under dress, because children are innocent. They don't want to lie. And so that's the solution. It's like, okay, just make them dead. No kids died in that. And I don't care who, who it insults in this case. Uh, again, answer me those first questions. Show, in fact, I will, I will recant everything I said if you can show me a 10-second video of a child being carried out of that building by law enforcement. There you go. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's see. No, that's a troll email. I'm not going to read this. I've got a troll uh, named Michael Gordon. He emails me a lot. I do not read 90% of his emails. Uh, but he, and I didn't even know he was a troll. He just kept, he just he emails me like every single day. And it's like, dude, not even, I'm just deleting your emails on site now. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Coin. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Flat Earth Coin. They, they want to make a new coin which is very, very cool. And I, the reason why I mention it isn't because I'm promoting PowerCoin, uh, although it was a very cool model, it is because they wanted to make a new coin and they asked me what the, the dates were for the Antarctic uh, Flat Earth Cruise. And I said, what are you talking about? Because they, they read it in the news. Because it's on the news, it must be true. And no, it was just a rumor that was started between three different things. One, uh, a, a television promoter out in... Uh, England, who just suggested it, the uh, Logan Paul piece, uh, which we'll get to later, probably not today, actually, uh, the Logan Paul piece where he said, he, you know, his fake girlfriend in that said, oh yeah, we should just run away to Antarctica because that's a thing. And then the 2020 cruise, which is supposedly next year going, leaving out of Florida, p p people put those two, three things together and all of a sudden said, oh, well, the, the cruise is obviously going to Antarctica and Logan Paul's going to be on it. Not kidding. And so uh, this power coin is asking me, it's like, oh yeah, when, when is the Antarctic expedition cruise? It's like, no, it's, it's not, it's not happening. There, there is no Antarctic expedition cruise. And anyone knows the clues would know why. 
Oh, let's see here. This one's called YouTube Search Manipulated at 6 a.m. today. Hi, Mark. At 6 a.m. Saturday, March 16th, I was searching for the new Flat Earth content on YouTube. The search terms Flat Earth. The filters were set for today and upload date below is what will return. No matter what the filter set up, I tried next. The search results were also the same as shown below. Please check this out for yourself. You will certainly comprehend the implications here. Thanks for all you do uh, to show everyone the truth. Yep, he's absolutely right. The filters are not working in YouTube. All's fair in love and war. Got to hand it to the Geek Squad on the other side of the chessboard that's playing. Uh, I, it's a bit drastic, uh, even more drastic than tearing down the search results. I mean, a lot of people didn't care about the search results bar, except us and you know some other people that are measuring social media metrics. But killing the filters, come on. That's a bold move. I'll give you that. I think it's a little little extreme but uh this one's called uh let's see nope that was another power coin one get rid of that this one's called more flat earth evidence mark more tidbits here to consider and it's a youtube video what's it called it's called flat earth revisited by emily windsor crag space news weekly number seven very cool. And that's from Alfred Lambremont Weber. Cool. I will take those under advisement. This one's called Podcast Guest. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Hope you're well enjoying life. My name is James Buck Buckley. I'm an actor from the UK. I also have a little YouTube channel with over 400,000 subs. I was wondering if it would be possible to have you as a guest on my channel podcast over the phone or Skype or whatever would suit yourself. I would love to chat with you about the flat earth, obviously, and how exactly you came to start believing in it. I'm not someone who believes the earth is flat, but I am open-minded and have so far struggled to understand why people think the earth is flat. I have not done a lot of research on the subject. Well, there you go. Uh, so it'd be very relaxed conversation. I certainly wouldn't be probing you or trying to catch you out or anything like that. I can imagine you get a lot of offers because this could be a nice way for you to be introduced to a wider UK audience. You would, of course, be treated like a guest with respect and would certainly not talk about anything you wouldn't want to. I would honestly just be a platform to spread your message on and something I think many would find interesting, even if they disagree. I really look forward to hearing from you and would be just blown away to get a response. Thanks, James Buckley. So I said yes. This one's called Joe Rogan Exposed. Mark, this guy has done his homework. Please share. And there's a link. And the video is called Joe Rogan Exposed Corrected Audio by Logos Media. Yep. Yep. Joe Rogan got compromised at one point. And look, someone was going to. Look, if you offer the carrot and the stick to people at the same time, you're, you're going to get some people. This one's called No Subject. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Alicia. And I'm researching a bit about the flat earth theory versus the globe theory. I had some questions. I was wondering if you could answer for me. Why hasn't anyone just flown a private plane across the Pacific to either prove or disprove the globe theory? Uh, if the sun and the moon are both within the dome, how come we can't see any of the sun's light in the nighttime? Also, how could tidal changes be explained without the moon's gravitational pull? Also, in the flat earth theory, how thick would the plane be? Any information would be greatly appreciated. Regards, Alicia Patterson. Yep. All the same old questions, which is good. Again, uh, they're, everyone that a lot of people that contact me, they're in the same sort of frame of mind. They've got these basic questions. And it, it happens time and time and time and time again, which is, what about this or how does this work? And it's great. It means they're trying to work it out in their head, like me. I'm always jealous because they will work it out faster than I did. Uh, this one's called YouTube Flatter Search Results. Hi, Mark. Follow up to an email sent uh, around 6.30 this morning. Isn't the Salton Sea retest being done this weekend? Perhaps this is why YouTube has forced the following video to be listed first at least at 6 a.m. Flat Earth versus Round Earth National Geographic Explorer. Yep. Thanks again for all your educational recruitment efforts from a friendly Flat Earther since November 30th, 2015. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting when you type in Flat Earth now. They, and they're rotating what what's what goes up to the top i mean currently it's it's uh logan paul sometimes and sometimes it's national geographic and sometimes it's some of the other bigger channels uh but rarely is there, are they flat earth channels at the top this one's called hi mark hope you're good uh let's see please let me know yep 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 the book yep i will get a hold of him this is called what 
if it is sort of flat. Hi, Mark. I watch you on Netflix. Loved it. Thought of your movement when I read this article about something called the holographic model of the universe, which relates to string theory, etc., and is a model used to explain findings seen in the universe. It turns out that it seems to work better than the standard models in explaining certain relationships between temperatures of things in the universe as they relate to how things cooled after the Big Bang. Well, the thing about that is, if I read the summary article correctly, the model is based on a theory that the entire universe is actually only two-dimensional. Hmm. And that the third dimension we all recognize is actually a hologram, for lack of a better term. Wait, what? Yep, that is what I said. Basically, the model is based on the idea that the entire universe is flat. Now, I'm not saying I'm a flat earther. I believe the Earth is roundish, not a perfect sphere, but very close to one, or at least that is how I perceive it. It's not how you perceive it, just so you know. It's how it's what you were told. You believe it because you were told this over and over and over again. It is the Orwell argument. And that is, uh, if I show you five lights, and I tell you they're four, and I do this over and over and over again, eventually your mind is going to defend itself, and eventually you are going to see four lights. People want to. People don't see the curvature of the Earth. They want to see it. Which is why I put the challenge out there. And it's never, ever been uh, um, uh, broken. Which is, show me, if you think you see the curvature of the earth, and I don't care if you're on a mountain or a balloon or a plane or the beach. The people who do it from the beach just kill me. They, they say, oh yeah, I see the curvature side to side from, from the beach. I go, fine, take a, a, a picture of it. Put it on a laptop. Put a straight edge up to it. Tell me you still see the curvature. If you do, send it to me and I will quit flat earth. And no, you can't send me the Lake Pontchartrain thing. That's just ridiculous. Every, even, come on, even the globalists know that the Lake Pontchartrain thing is ridiculous because if, if it, the curvature was that severe, then the, the world would be less than 50 miles wide. Anyway, uh, so I am not your usual group member. Please don't hold that against me. I am, however, a perpetual contrarian. I don't hear that very often. And question everything. I think this article supports your ideas in a sense that we all perceive as round. Even an apple in your hand might not actually be round, at least not mathematically. The bottom line is that this article describes a published study that shows that a model based on the entire universe being flat seems to work really well in explaining some well-accepted observations about the universe. Again, observations by who? And in fact, it works better than the previous standard model in some aspects. So there you have it. Some legitimate scientists studying the universe have proposed that the entire thing behaves when measuring certain characteristics as if it were a flat hologram. And there's the link to the article. Warmest regards, David Brenner. Well, it's in his head. It's going to take him a while, though, to get around this. This one's called Check This Out. Uh, hey, Mark, I've been watching and listening to you since March 2015, Raised by Gypsies. Your vids were the first ones which started me on this wonderful journey. Thank you. Love all you do. I've been an MMA fan for much longer and still watch the fights. Well, Paul Felder, a fighter and announcer, was calling the fights this past weekend. He dropped an FE bomb. Check this video. It's only 22 seconds. Cheers, Mark Hicks. Yeah, the, this commentator just during the middle of this MMA fight for no apparent reason. The, the camera wasn't even on him. It was on the fighters. He, he, somebody mentioned gravity and he segued it straight into a flat earth conversation and the other commentator wasn't having it. It's very, very interesting. This one's called Behind the Curve. Mark, very entertaining movie, but I have questions. Here we go. One, you spent a total of $40,000 on instrumentation. Where'd that come from? 40000 And you didn't even show how the setup was. Laser test was over water, correct? Uh, actually, no, it wasn't. It was over a, a straight road near a canal. It wasn't over water. Uh, two, you didn't even mention about the flying into the spin or, or Antarctica. Why? Oh, okay. I know where, the, where this guy's going. This guy thinks I actually directed the movie or had anything to do with the editing or the producing of the movie. I, I probably should have gotten a production credit, but I had nothing to do with the editing or the directing. They shot it the way they shot it. And after seven months or seven months shooting, they uh that's what they came up with uh three the crazy guy that you showed throughout the movie seemed like the one who was correct after your failed attempts to disprove the globe i have no idea what you meant there i hope you haven't been bought out because you seemed like you were searching for truth back when i'd seen earth clues or you just did that movie for the money and then there's your reward dude i did not make this movie that was made by delta v productions they got every freaking dime. Everybody in the movie that was a subject had to sign away, as a matter of fact, their rights to it, saying, you will not get anything from us, period. Uh, let's see. My brother used 
use the behind the curve footage to bust my chops on Facebook. I automatically discredited it before I even watched it. Good. I couldn't believe it when I'd seen you, the front man for Flat Earth, doing more damage than good. Flat Earth Society, really? That to me always seems so mainstream, cost of success, I guess. Sorry if I seemed harsh, but I still believe that the truth is out there somewhere. I believe that the powers that be want to suppress it. Are you still on the side of truth? God bless, and I hope at least I got your attention. That's from Tom. Uh, hopefully Tom knows by now that uh, I had nothing to do with the creation of uh, uh, the final products of that movie. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, this one's called Any Big Flat Earth Events in July or August. Hey Mark, Suzanne Sear here in South Korea. I'm planning on flying home to Florida to visit my sister this summer for July and August. I was wondering if you knew of any big flat earth conferences or events that are going to be taking place anywhere in the U.S. at that time. Or if any of you listeners plan on hosting a big event or meet up during the months of July or August, could you please let me know? My email, which you can give out on air, is uh, sborho at yahoo.com. That's s.borho at yahoo.com. Thanks for all you do in spreading the flat earth truth. Cheers and blessings from afar, Suzanne. Uh, yeah, actually, there. it's funny she mentions this because those are the only two months that really aren't anything. Well, good English there. <laughs> There isn't anything happening. Uh, the New Zealand conference, of course, is coming up at the end of April. Calgary at the end of May. UK conference in the middle of September. Mount Shasta and uh, third week of September. Amsterdam the last week of September. Dallas in November. But currently, we don't have any conferences happening in uh, July and August. So we might have some meetups, but but no conferences. So hopefully Suzanne's listening and we're still working on it. This one's called Behind the Curve, New Netflix Thumbnail. What's up, Mark? It's half past 11 East Coast. My wife and children are asleep after watching the bloke from Britain, Darren the Gorilla, till get his head bounced off the canvas by George Masvidal. Check it out below. I decided to get on Netflix, see if I could watch some of the Apollo propaganda. They're vomiting before the 50th anniversary of the glory days. I instead wanted to check algorithms in the search for beyond the, behind the curve. What I found is they've changed the thumbnail for Behind the Curve. Yeah, they have, a couple times. I'm thinking they want to draw a larger crowd with a new thumbnail. I think more people will click inconspicuously. Yeah, absolutely right. Also, there's a group of creation scientists who released a documentary the other day, $4 to rent, $12 to own. I'm sure you've heard of Danny Faulkner. He's part of Answers in Genesis, or one of the other creation groups. He says, Flat Earth is dangerous for science and Christians. We chat often. It's crazy. It's like he thinks we're the boogeyman. Yeah, I know. I will be the boogeyman before it's over. I almost guarantee it. They're uh, they're leaning that way, and I haven't done anything really different, except I said I'm coming after the children. Uh, let's see. So yeah, behind behind the curve, see the world in a whole new shape. Thumbnail, and yeah, and then the 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 thumbnail for it is now just a hand holding up a globe, which the backdrop is also a globe and the curvature of the Earth which is interesting and it's yeah it's it's still getting traction out there all right this one's called proposed test by a neutral person mark there's a simple test that will prove you right or wrong i strongly advise you to have all the parties of your flat earth community to participate because it might cost a lot of money you know you're, you're not not starting out well uh the procedure follows one have a lot of straight light metal rods made they have to be really strong, about 20, 30 feet long. Two, connect them by screwing them together from a beach out to a big ship in the ocean. Oh, wow. Uh, three, make sure the ends of the rods are free to move up and down on the ship. Four, have the ship go out in the sea slowly, allow you to attach a new rod to the beach end. Five, see how far the ship travels until you see the rod rising on the ship. If this happens, you are wrong. If the ship goes out for miles and the elevation of the rod is about the same in the beach and the ship, you are right. I challenge you and your organization to do this. I dare you. That's from Tony. Uh, why not just spare the rod and uh, use a laser? I mean, wouldn't wouldn't that work also as well? Because a razor, laser shouldn't shouldn't bend. I'd trust the laser more than I would a steel rod. Just saying. This one's called flags, please. Mark, please send me your flags. Yes. Uh, yeah. If anyone wants some cool flat Earth logos, I got the flat Earth University flag and then the. Uh, like the, the Flat Earth Globe Pirate flag and then the Flat Earth Clues flag that was made by DITRH. 
This one's called Flat Earth Antarctica Expedition. Mark, articles like these pop out more and more in recent news. I doubt anyone will be circumnavigating anything in the near future, but will be interesting to see where it leads, if anywhere. And it's Forbes magazine. Yeah, this was the Forbes article. Glad somebody finally mentioned this. Uh, this actually, The article wasn't terrible. It's from Jim Dobson. Uh, from the travel section. Flat Earth supporters now plan an Antarctica expedition to the edge of the world. Now, and, and Robbie's in it, and there's, uh, and Logan Paul's in it, and the kid, oh yeah, the Jade DeCasby. This article is really what spawned, because it was Forbes magazine, which has a lot of credibility. This is the article that spawned all this Antarctica trip stuff. And it was just and everybody just took the wrong chunks out of it and it's now spread down the grapevine to where there's this going to be this flat earth cruise expedition everybody's going to be going on it including logan paul and they're going to make a television series out of it none of these things are true not a single one of them but that is the forbes article so if you want to know where 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 everything got jets first generated from it was that because the the people that aren't don't have as much much integrity as Forbes, uh, they you know, they they didn't even bother checking. Well, Forbes obviously knows their stuff, so we're just going to piecemeal everything out of that. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I just had a quick question. What do you think happened to Malaysia Airlines Flight Three Seventy? This is where it went missing on the globe map. But watched you, but watching you debunk the plane flights. What is your opinion? Do you think the pilot saw the truth? No, I don't. And why did it go off radar and then go missing or just fall out of the sky? I don't know why it fell out of the sky. I know why it went off radar is because the radar couldn't track it out there. Also, what does the flight path look on the flatter scale? I don't know because we don't know the exact flight path because it dropped off the radar. That's with just about any plane that goes out over water about 150 miles offshore. When there isn't another ground radar station, it will go into approximated or estimated mode. Which I also lo love the fact that that the um, in the documentary behind the curve, the the young lady, the young physicist, she's oh yeah, I totally debunked it. It's like really because I didn't stare at those flight paths for months on end, and and she just just said oh look here it is, it's totally easily debunked. It's like, wow, and the director let that through because again the director hates flat Earth. Uh, all right, so this one's called Flat Earth Newbie. Hello, Mark. I should probably start by saying I'm not sold on the whole Flat Earth theory, but after watching the Netflix documentary, it did get me thinking a bit more about the subject, and that led me over to your Facebook videos. Great, except I'm not on Facebook, so I'm hoping he meant YouTube. Upon watching your videos, I then wanted to see what others would think about some of the points made, and there are, of course, a ton of videos online disproving Flat Earth, and I wouldn't say tons. Uh, in fact, we outnumber the debunkers by a huge margin, but whatever. I'm a very open person. I have no issue accepting facts and having my mind changes on topics I already believe or have knowledge of it. As I dig deeper into this theory, though, <laughs> I'm the most open-minded person in the world. However, uh, my one big question right now is why? Uh, would it be such a massive deal to hide the fact the Earth is flat if it was indeed that way? I understand it would make a lot of people angry. It would throw everything we have been taught up in the air if the Earth was indeed flat. But what is gained from hiding the fact from the public? Yeah, I don't know if you watched the clues yet. I explained it all in the Flat Earth Clues pretty quickly. Uh, I honestly have so many questions. Here we go. And I'm sure more will arise as I dive deeper into this, but I don't want to throw a ton of questions your way as I can only assume the amount of emails you already get. Lastly, I'm only 27 and my generation isn't so set in the old ways are more senior people would be so as mentioned I don't I know how he was trying to build that sentence. I am open to having my mind changed on this subject provided with the right evidence and proof. And so far, your videos have got me thinking. Yeah, cool. He's on his way. This one's called Question. Dear Mark, a friend and I were having a discussion about the flat earth. And as we were discussing, aliens were brought up. I'm unsure if you talked about the subject or if you'd be willing to give an opinion. Do you believe in aliens? Could you give any opinions on aliens you have? Thanks. And that's from Rose. Uh, yeah. I don't believe that they're from other planets. Do I think there's remnants of older civilizations, older versions of us? Yeah, you bet. Absolutely, I do. Uh, I think, again, you guys have heard this before. We are not the first people to rent this apartment. I don't know what version our civilization is in this, uh, but definitely not the first. And older ver versions probably have advanced technology and are flying around every once in a while but no they do not come from venus and mars and jupiter and all that they're probably in here with us or subterranean in my guess 
Uh, this one's called Comments After Netflix Doc. Dear Mark, I'm currently looking at the documentary on Flat Earth on Netflix. Let me first present myself. I am scientific, have a PhD in chemistry. I work in private companies, never associated to any governmental or whatever agencies except for my PhD in the petroleum industry. Uh, looking at the documentary, as you can guess, I'm clearly not believing the theory. However, I always like to give the benefit of the doubt. What strikes me the most here is the impact on people and how our society can derive dangerously due to mass communication. Every great invention progress can be modified to become damaging. Best example of it is nuclear energy. My first hypothesis is that you truly believe this theory. Despite you turn this down to a business, turn this down to a business, I sincerely think you try to do it in to highlight people. Not sure where he's going from this with this, and I'm pretty sure he's not from the United States to begin with. So I'm, I'm I'll forgive the the grammar stuff because English not his first language. Uh, in the documentary, you and your associates try to demonstrate the Earth does not spin on itself. This very specific question was raised in history, a very solid proof of evidence that was con conducted by Foucault in 1851. Oh, boy. As you can guess, I am French. Ah, there we go. I can edit help it. I immediately thought about that argument. Foucault built a giant pendulum that demonstrated the rotation of the Earth. Here's the wiki page. And you can probably find a ton of documentation. You can visit the installation in Par Paris. It's free. Blah, 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 blah. This theory will be checked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Foucault pendulum is never going to... If... if if the Foucault pendulum hasn't killed the flat earth by now, it's never going to because you can't explain it to the average person on the street because it is a difficult experiment to explain to people just, just out of the, out of the gate, what it's, what it's trying to prove. Then of course, how does the, how does the experiment start? Remember the inertia has to start from somewhere and it's the inertia is not completely objective. So, and, and even after you start it, how does it keep running? What mechanical process keeps it running? And of course, we'll circle back to the fact that most people... I, I, my argument is this. I, why I don't worry about Foucault is that if you gave a scientist 60 seconds to explain it and gave me 60 seconds to explain it to the same person, just somebody you pulled off the street, neither side is going to come up with any sort of argument because the person is not going to understand it. They're just not going to understand the, the concept behind it. Uh, is it clear that numbers of questions were raised at ages where technology was far more limited. I will not argue with the other theories, but if in 1851, wow, he's, he was not letting go of this folk cult thing. Uh, if it was solidly proven, uh-huh. Uh, please do not, basically he's saying, do not propagate false facts. Basically, if it's solid proven, you shouldn't tell lies. This will bring masses to the dark ages. Oh boy, like the middle age period in Europe, it is everybody's responsibility to protect peace and freedom. Too many people in history died to demonstrate Earth was not flat as an example. Wow. This guy's doing doing the uh, National Geographic rant. Uh, so please, have a gen behave as a genuine human being. It is okay to okay to raise questions. Well, not not according to you. It, it, in order to, in, according to you to be a genuine human being, I'm not supposed to ask questions. I'm supposed to toe the line. Again, not to use the Dana Perino th line from Fox News, where this Fox newscaster, who used to be a press secretary for the White House, uh, she said, I believe in the Apollo missions because I'm a patriot. Basically saying, if, if you love your country, you believe whatever they tell you, period. It's like, ooh, ooh that's slippery. And of course, it's hypocritical because if there was a Democrat in the White House, she wouldn't believe it. But yeah, the whole partisan thing. Uh, every scientific theory may be broken one day indeed, oh, but not by me and not by the flat earth theory. Uh, science is a process that helps representing the world. The process is good. The outcome can always be better. And that's what makes it great. It is not okay to be in denial on facts. This email is sent to you personally and has no other purpose. Uh, I'm not interested by any public exposure of any kind. I only want to refer a point that may interest you uh, if you are in the search of better understanding of the world. And I will not read his name. Yeah, sorry, guy. Flat Earth is not going to stop. You want to try to stop Flat Earth? You could, you could gun me down in the street and Flat Earth is not stopping. I'm just the freshman recruiter. Flat Earth is so much bigger than you have any idea. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Go figure. Hello there, Mark. I'm 24 years old. I'm from the UK. I have been very interested in Flat Earth for a few years now, and I'm 99% there. 
However, I just want to ask about dates regarding the first hot air balloon. The first airplane flight and also the first moon landing. Watch your YouTube video and said the balloon invention was in 1900s. No, it was in the 1700s. I've been trying to research the actual dates and, and as follows. 1783. Yeah, I... 1903, plane invention, and 1961, man. No, where did you get 1961, man, on the moon? No, uh, the the first Apollo missions were in the early 60s, yes. But the first landing, if you believe mainstream science, was in 1969. Uh, if I'm correct, that would go in order of technology. I'm a little confused on dates. Yes, you are. And unsure if Google has changed them for a reason. Nope, you're just reading it wrong. Please, could you help me understand a little more? I would be very grateful uh let's see i'm in the uk pretty open-minded so unable to really talk to anybody about this oh i'm sorry people in the uk are pretty unopened minded interesting way of putting that thank you so much uh and the netflix doc was great look forward to hearing from you chloe uh south of england uh, no no you just have your dates wrong uh 1700s was the balloon obviously the planes were in the early 1900s and then in the late 1960s, 1969 was the Apollo 11. That, that was the big one. If you believe mainstream science. This one's called Meme. Uh, hey, Mark. Sean Rose of Greenwood, Indiana. I just made a meme that I think sums up the life of most flat earthers and attempts, attempts to wake others up. Hope you dig it. And let's see. It's about a Meg. Oh, yeah, it's a shot from one of the Twilight Zone episodes where Shatner saw the gremlin on the on the airplane wing uh, and his wife's sleeping and she says, stop trying to wake me up. I don't want to see it. And he's looking out the window. He goes, wake up. You got to see this. There's no curve out there. There's simply no curve. It's good. Like it. And she's wearing a NASA shirt. This one's called Direct TV Logo. Mark, what's up, my G? How's it going? I've been watching you now for a few years and love your content. I was high as hell a few days ago in my backyard, and I noticed something strange about my DirecTV dish. I know that the elite like to put the truth right in your face. If you turn the DirecTV logo to the side, you can clearly see that their logo is actually a dome. I see things like this all the time now. Thanks for keeping my eyes open. Keep up the great work. The light is getting brighter. And that's from Morris. Cool. Like Morse Day in the Time. All right, this one's called Interview Requests. Hey, Mark, I checked out Behind the Curve this weekend on Netflix. It would be great to have you on as guest. I host Overnight America in St. Louis, but our signal at 11.20 a.m. reaches 30 states because of its monster signal at night. Would you be able up for a live interview some night to discuss your views, plus maybe open up some calls if anyone is interested? I like the idea of live interviews because they're unedited and free-flowing conversation. I've done an interview with someone in the past regarding Flat Earth, and uh, I don't come at it in a mocking way. Rather, I love learning of the things other people believe that are different from your own. If you're interested, let me know, and maybe we can look at some time next week. And that's from Ryan KMOX Radio. Yep. It's also 102.5 KEZK and now 96.3 and FM News Talk 97.1. So yeah, I will be doing that uh, pretty soon and I will record it. This one's called Tantalizing Tidbit. Uh, this one looks a little big. Uh, hello, Mark. First, thanks for hanging tough over these past four years and not backing down. And equally, thank you for being a sane, mature, thoughtful, and down-to-earth, I had to use a pun, right, voice leading the Flat Earth movement. I'm not leading it. I'm just introducing it. Secondly, I was watching this video on YouTube, Klaus Don of the Hidden History of the Human Race. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see... And he wanted me to forward this email to Rob Skiba. Let's cut to the chase. Um, also, I have a flat earth question. A friend of mine flew a jet in the Air Force and has since flown cargo planes around the world. When he saw some of my posts wherein I have put some flat earth evidences out there on Facebook, he instantly debunked them by stating that he has a set of controls in the aircraft and apart from landing and taking off, he has not changed them. And after however many hours, he had circumnavigated the earth and ended up back at where he started. Would you be able to provide some insight into what he's missing? I totally get what the gyroscope should let him know that his jet should be flying straight off into the dome. So clearly he's turning in his aircraft mid-flight without realizing it. Yes, he absolutely is. Uh, he could look at any of the pilots that, that have come on my show and spoken openly about this, including a 737 one that worked for KLM. 
out in Europe who got fired because she said the earth is flat and they said, we don't want you flying our planes. Um, and and the, the playlist is called the the um, Flat Earth Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Experts. I don't. I think I have about 10 playlists in my YouTube channel. Just go to that one, you'll find it. Uh, lastly, you had a guest on your Strange World radio show, Thomas, a retired Air Force navigator currently working for the government back in 2016, I believe, when the interview took place, who specialized in combat planning, mid-air refueling, and the like. The YouTube video is called Retired U.S. Air Force Navigator Talks About the Flat Earth. Strange World 39. Wow, that just takes me back because we're in, way up there now. Uh, do you think he'd let you share his email address with me if I still had it? That's a long time ago. I do not share the email addresses of a lot of these guys. Um, I'd like to pick his brain about some of the flight-based questions because it was clear to me in the interview that he had hours of thoughts and observations and military flight observations to share, but he just didn't have time. I also recently got schooled via YouTube comments by someone when I reacted to a NASA scientist who was trying to claim that ships can still be seen to disappear over the curve of the Earth. Because a NASA scientist would address this? I don't know if I'd believe that he was actually a NASA scientist. I'd like to interact with Thomas if possible so that I can better respond to comments like this in the future. Thanks so much, Greg Handleton. Uh, cool. He's out of Ohio. Awesome. And I will try to write him back and see if I can give him the list. Okay, this one's called Australian TV Interview Request. Mark. Hi, Mark. My name is Catherine, producer of the Australian Today Show. I was wondering if you would be available for an interview about your flatter theories. We love discussing different topics and exploring different viewpoints. It would be great if we could talk with you. We can arrange a studio near wherever you are. We have access to a studio in Seattle. If you're interested, please work out the logistics. Look forward to hearing from you. Yep. Yep. I contacted them and we are working something out. This one's called Just My Story. Mark, I was in the first grade when my teacher showed us a globe and told us that the earth was round and spinning. I grabbed my chair and I got sick to my stomach and asked, why do we not feel it? Or how do we know we're not upside down? She told me, gravity. I started asking more questions that she could not answer and told me to ask my parents. I ran home so freaked out. My dad showed me a book with all the planets and told me that they are just an artist that drew them and he really did not know what they looked like and talked about the fake moon landing because he was into photography. That we really did not know. This was 1970. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. Yeah. It talks about angles in the corner of the earth, so I calmed down. I did not give it another thought, really. I just figured keep quiet because people think you're crazy. So when I watched your video, I was so excited. I try to show everyone, but still people think you have lost your mind. I am just glad I am not alone. I did grow up with a dad who was a big conspiracy guy. I thought he was crazy sometimes on some stuff, but now I know half of the stuff he talked about was true. Keep up the good work, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Always nice to have people share. Okay, this one's called Hope You Enjoy a Piece of My Mind. Uh, there's quite a few questions here, but well, actually, let's just read this. Mark, hope all is well. My name is Ken, and I simply decided to email you because I wanted to simply give some of my rationale and logic. Some may be so off the wall, but I think it really isn't. I remember seeing the first amateur rocket to reach lower Earth orbit and seeing an animation where when it breached outer space and thinking WTF. I've been a flat earther for years, even before the movement. Well, before I even met or knew others believed. My way of comprehending the Earth. Now, here are the few things I would like to share. The sun cannot be a celestial being in a vacuum. Sorry. Uh, reasons. Fire needs oxygen to exist to become stronger. In order to make a fire weaker, you need to reduce or eliminate that source of oxygen. So what else fuels fire besides combustion and oxygen? Gas needs a container or it'll bleed away, like pipes, valves, etc. The sun doesn't have an atmosphere, according to science, or it would have burned away. With no atmosphere, I would assume instant implosion. People who say or ask, why do we not fall off or everything in the sky is spherical? My logic, the counters is we are on a spinning rock with tons of water. We are looking for either complete rocks and or bodies of gas. Why are we the same shape as them? Two, why do we not spin off this erratic spinning ball? Three, what is a vacuum? What in a vacuum makes balls? In order to make a ball, one must mold it. Um, gravity. Gravity is the only needed if the up and down is variable, which no matter where you go, it is not. Velocity, buoyancy, mass, etc. Gravity in physics is typically not a variable. The higher you go, the less dense air in which to give it a variation. 
I could continue, but I know you get tons of emails, and I would like to go for on for years about the Tesla in the outer space, which nobody talks about the reflection of the entire Earth in the hood when the object is like a speck of sand five centimeters away from a beach, giving a picture of the entire beach. Just not happening. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, the, how could you see the entire Earth in that in that uh, windshield? Anywho, I'm just a man who studied a little bit in university physics one and two and other prereqs. Thanks for your time. Hopefully, you read something that never crossed your mind. As I have way more to offer. Respectfully, Ken. Cool, Ken. Thank you for that. This one's called "Question about the documentary." Hey, Mark, I had a question real quick. In the documentary, the camera crew seems to be biased with some of the information that they show, and they end up ending it on a note proving the globe, so to speak. And things like when they show you tapping the screen at NASA and not the button in the chair. I just want to know if you felt like the documentary was biased, and if they misled or wronged you during production, since they clearly do not believe in flat Earth and instead subscribe to the globe. Thanks for the reply. Regards, uh, Barter Cardinal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There were several things there. I, just about everything they could have done was taken out of context. I mean, big things like, of course, the fact that Jaron didn't have line of sight. Of course, part of that was Jaron's fault because he didn't have line of sight before the test. He did it live for the first time. And then only later when he went back during the daytime did he realize he didn't have line of sight. Uh, taking Bob's quote out of context. Of course, me with the green button. Uh, how how did the green button get uh, missed when it was literally the only button sitting there in front of me? No, I hit that thing in two seconds, and when it wasn't working, like a lot of the stuff at that, because it was just kind of like a NASA amusement park in there, there were a lot of things that were broken. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe it's a touchscreen, and you know, maybe there's an override. Nope, nope, nope. And he just lucked out because when we left the scene, he zoomed in on the green button. He didn't zoom on it because I missed it. He zoomed on it because he needed a place to zoom in on before he faded out. He, you need some buffer before you cut things. Oh, also other things like my sister's house. When my mom was walking down the stairs out of that house in the beginning of the show, that wasn't, that wasn't her house. That was my sister's house. And then the interior shots were of my mother's house in a different part of the island. But yet, when you tie those two together, people think, oh, there's the exterior, that's the interior shots. Uh, Jaren's house, which they never showed the exterior of. They showed his neighbor's house, which was apparently sitting on bricks with a whole bunch of cats. And and Jaren was like, look, why are you showing this house? That's not even where I live. The, the, produce, the producers and the director did everything at the power of editing. You have no idea what you can do with editing. You can... Uh, the green button was was probably the the, the worst though, and the um, for me because it that there was a message. It's like, well, if Mark missed the green button and it was so obvious, then he misses other obvious things like the globe, which is obvious. Very very good. And it was all done. All of that was done because of the twelve year old kid that walked up to, during the conference and asked a question to me on stage. That was why they turned it, is because they, they hate Flat Earth. They hate it as a concept. They may like the people, but they hate the concept, and which is fine. Uh, they just helped us in the end. This one's... Uh, oh, nope, I already got this one. This one's called Flying West. we got to figure out a good one to end on. Uh, Hi, Mark. I sent you this question a week ago or so. Not sure you got it. Hopefully, you'll get this one. Uh, if the Earth is flat why and how do planes fly west from california to australia please give me an answer there is almost the only question that keeps me from being a believer thanks pamela uh, pamela you gotta get a flat earth map and, and do it yourself and tell me what you see you gotta remember the compass also works on a flat earth map at least uh, for the north it does this one's called Antarctica Trip. Hey, Mark, just finished watching Behind the Curve. Noticed that you have interesting ideas about the edge of the Earth. Do you want to take a trip to Antarctica to look for the wall? Jim, uh, yeah, good luck with that. If you can if you can bypass all the treaty stuff and make sure you got your paperwork, sure, I'll go. It'll be miserable, but I will go. Just wear a lot of warm clothing and be bored because there's nothing to see out there. Uh, let's see, this one's called Trucker Gerald. Hello, Mark. I just listened to Dean Odell about a week ago. What is going on? He is calling everyone Satan worshippers and to stop supporting you, Patricia and Jaron and others. Thank you, Trucker Gerald. Yeah. One of the side effects of Flat Earth is enhanced convictions and Dean Odell has decided that he is going to condemn everybody that doesn't think exactly like he does regarding the flat earth we see this sometimes and that is when uh, i won't give out names necessarily but when you start out in flat earth you get a couple thousand subscribers you're pretty humble you hit about twenty thousand subs 
and all of a sudden you start delivering this weird thing happens where you potentially could start delivering a message where you say, if it's not message, if you're not with me, you're against me. And that's what he decided to do, which was, you know, he was always a very strong Christian and, you know, a strong Bible literalist. And so he's come out and says, if you do not believe this chapter and verse sections, these sections in the Bible, exactly how they are written and exactly how I interpret them, then you're going to hell and you're the enemy. And it's, wow, it's extreme. You know, it's, you know what? I should even change that. It's one com common side effects include extreme convictions. Not just enhanced, extreme. So, sorry. I feel bad because he's lashing out at Rob Skiba, and Rob Skiba is one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. Straight shooter. Excuse me, straight shooter. Uh, let's see, this one's from Caroline. She sent me the um, Flat Earth Collection. Caroline is uh, otherwise known as uh, AZFE Chick. She's a fantastic Flat Earth uh, cheerleader. Love her to death. And uh, uh, thank you for sending me that. This one's called Something to Consider. Hey, Mark, I'm David, now living in Barcelona, Spain. I saw the Netflix documentary start to unleash some of my personal thoughts about the flat earth that I already had on my own. I want to check to see if you would be interested on my insights about why artificial satellites and space stations have to describe zigzagging orbits like the pic I attached with all the advances in tech. Why are we still unable to fly over the poles? Hmm. Why are satellites have to zigzag up and down inside our some confined space if i have something up there i would love to move with freedom and go around anything because we are in a sphere so at one point i would love to go all around why can't we take other directions and some satellites have to wait to round the earth as a matter is a matter to pay attention if you are interested on the topic i can start piling some data and send something more serious about this Hope we get in touch. I can send more personal credentials credentials about myself. I'm definitely not living uh, on my grandma's basement or look like the system says a conspiranoid looks like. Happy to share more insights and info. That's from David. Uh, yeah, hopefully, David, if you're listening to this, yeah, send me what you got. No cliffhangers, though. No cliffhangers. Send me what you got. Uh, let's see. This one's called Another Great RFB. It's a video, and it's called RFB and Nicholson 1968. Oh, yeah, Richie from Boston. Yeah. Yep. Richie from Boston. He's with us. Love it. Love that he's with us. Good for him. Love to talk to him one day. Have I talked to him? I don't think I have. Um, hopefully, I, I didn't. Otherwise, that'd be kind of offensive. Let's see. We got to find some a good one to end on, a happy one. Uh, this one's called Santa. Eh, I don't know if we'll end on Santa, but let's try it. Mark, not, a, not for Q&A, just FYI. Really? All right, fine. I won't read it. You say you don't want it on Q&A? You'll get it on Q&A. This one's called Questions from a Potential Flat Earther. Mark, if the world was indeed flat and we are not, in fact, orbiting the sun, how does GPS work? Have you not watched the, the clues yet? Uh, we require having a satellite in orbit to able to achieve GPS coordinates. <laughs> he has not watched the clues yet. Secondly, I'm not sure if you have heard of this, but spherical objects can't be projected in onto a flat surface without distorting. It is... Is this what mathematically proven by Carl Frederick Gauss? So any attempt to map, map the world's surface on a flat plane would be inner, inaccurate and not be possible to use as navigation. By looking up the landmass of countries, you can see that the countries in a flat earth map, such as Australia, appear much larger than countries like Greenland, even though Greenland mass, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I know. Yep. It's in his head. I'm not going to argue with him. Uh, let's see here. This one's called I Have an Experiment Idea and Coast to Coast Interview Throne of God PDF. Please send. And it's spinning. Okay. I don't know if people can get away from gyroscopes or flights anymore, but it'd be interested to measure east and west drift next to a compass. It might be possible to measure a small amount of drift. Thanks for reading and keep uh, inspiring people to look for truth. Uh, don't read the blow on air. Got it. Got it. All right. I will not read the blow stuff on air. Uh, this one's called Dragon Military Group. Yep, yep. Hi, Mark, if you haven't found it yet, uh, please send me all your stuff. And yeah, the, it was the Airborne. It was Airborne, which is interesting. Somebody, uh, it was an old patch that was in my grandfather's things. It was from Airborne, even though he was in artillery. So I don't know who gave it to him. This one's called Denver 190 Mile High City. Yeah, it's a video. Yep, thank you for that. That's from Caroline. 
This one's called More Flat Earth Proof Experiments. It's from Todd, in case you haven't seen all these. It's 15 minutes long. And the video is called Scientists Capture Firmament on Video Explained by the Flat Earth Brothers. Guys, you got to put, I'm, I'm not kidding you, I don't exaggerate when I say this, put Flat Earth in the title of every video that you make somewhere along the lines. So at least it shows up in the metrics. But thank you for that. Oh, come on, there's got to be a good one here. Uh, let's see. Nope. Nope. This one's called Why They Lie. Another from Flat Earth Brothers. Worth checking out this info and channel. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out the Flat Earth Brothers, uh, they do some good stuff. But Flat Earth Brothers, if you're listening, put Flat Earth somewhere in the title of your video. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Love your work. Please send me the Survival Guide. Cheers and take care. Kind regards, Sean uh, from Australia. Yep, if anyone wants a free survival guide, it's only two megs. It's called Empty Shelves. I made it on a PDF file. Happy to send it to you. This one's called... I'm act, act, Active Duty Military. Hi, Mark. Is it is it possible to talk on Tuesday? I have a couple of questions. Thanks, Chris. Uh, you're going to have to give me a little more than that, Chris, because a lot of people want to talk on the phone, and you gotta give me, you got to give me more. You can't just... I mean, I love short emails, but that one's too short. Uh, this one's called... You know what? Let's end on this one. This one sounds kind of fun. Um, space herpes. Somebody sent me this. N n no zippers. Be good cat. No meowing. We're, we're finishing this up. Uh, except it's called NASA. It's, it's from Sky News. NASA, NASA issues space herpes warning as virus reactivates in astronauts. The stress of the body in space flight is believed to contribute to suppressing the immune system and helping the virus to grow. And it goes into uh, a lot of stuff on that so yeah if you want to look up something again that is just a space reinforcement story there's there's nothing all they care about they don't even care if you read the article all they really care about is do you uh the all you the all they care is that it's a space drum beat that you acknowledge and that is oh space herpes because you're in space uh face on mars because we're in space Hex hexagram on the top of saturn reclassifying pluto every space story is there for exactly one reason, and that is to reinforce that you're on a globe right now. All right, that's it. That's a, that's all I'm going to do right now. My voice isn't still 100%, but we're going to work on it. And the cat's meowing, so I got to I gotta get out of here. So thank you, everyone. Send me an email. Uh, you can Remember, you can send all your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.